Good afternoon, everybody. Phil, I hope your uh, ears are burning. I think we were talking about you last night. Um, but anyway, how's everybody doing? Can you hear me? Loud and clear? I'll wait to see a thumbs up uh, before I give up on, uh, on my microphones. Today's been a, a really disappointing day. Um, I had a great idea too late in the day to do anything about it, uh, but I tried anyway, and I'll show you what I've done. It's all studio related stuff, but it's gonna make a big difference. It would have made a big difference today if I could make it work. Um, we're gonna be talking about bags today, but not necessarily the whole time. Uh, we, can, uh, we can just run over a few points I wanted to make, if you like. Got a couple of announcements. I want to talk about what's going on the rest of this week, uh, if anybody's interested. I'm going to talk about it if you're not interested because I think it's interesting. But uh, let me first of all see who's here. Uh, Walter's here from uh, uh, somewhere near Washington DC. Walter, did you, um, did you get your diffusion material? I hope you did. Let me know. Uh, Bacon Meister, glad to see you back at home. Good for you. And uh, you got your uh, Mylar. Excellent. Well, that was pretty quick, getting all the way from here to all the way over there. Nils is here from Trondheim, which is in Norway. I know that because I just read his note. And uh, Hembrodian's here. Greetings. Alistair's here. And so is Rob from Peebles. Peebles is a real place. It sounds like a made-up name, but it's not. It's a real place in the borders of Scotland, and it's absolutely lovely there. Is it on the Tweed? No, it's on one of those rivers though, isn't it? Can't remember, not to worry. Um, let me see, Lance is here and Vivian Daly is here. Greetings, how are you? Uh, let me see, Dragos is here from Romania. That's always a, a, a thing to cheer me up. Glad you're here, glad you're here, Dragos. Uh, Ralph from Pinna, which is in North West London. I told you I was good at geography. And uh, Manuel Madrid is here from Spain. That's fantastic. We don't, we don't have a Spanish contingent until, until Manuel joined us. That's good. Uh, Phil, hope you're doing well. David, and uh, let me see who else is here. Graham's here, loud and clear. Still a bit of a hum. Oh, the hum's not going away. I've tried everything. I've, I've, I've tried everything. It's coming from these boxes on my desk. And I can't turn them off because all my stuff's on there. I've tried putting them in a box and putting them under the desk and it just vibrates. So uh, I'll keep working on it. I'll keep working on it. Mike's here from hot, sunny Phoenix, Arizona. And um, yeah, D D David says it's sunny in Yorkshire too. That's never happened before. You should take a picture of that. That would be good. Um, who am I missing? Art Wagner, got your mylar. Good for you. And Rob Watt, is it, it is on the Tweed. How's that for, for uh, an old person's memory kicking in at the last minute? Um, all right, Walter, um, I think I might have figured out the problem. Um, it's, it's me and my mailing list. I will, uh, I will fix it, I will fix it. There will be Mylar coming your way. This is actually on my list of things to say. If, if you contacted me and asked for Mylar, uh, like Amy did, and then of all the people for me to forget, uh, I forgot to send Amy's till yesterday. Uh, so uh, if, if you were on the list and I didn't get to it, it's because somehow you didn't get on my uh, mailing list. Uh, so just just let me know and I'll fix it because I've, I've saved some. I've saved some because I know that I will miss people when I do this. Uh, so Walter, you can just uh, make sure I have your address, please. I think the way we did that was, um, yeah, it, well, Amy was here and she took the address and then emailed it to me. Um, that way I'd, I'd know it was coming and I'd get to it. But Walter, you know how to email me. Just email me with your address. Uh, um, <coughs> who else? Robert's here from Ocala, Florida. That's always good to hear as well. Glad you're here, Robert. We're talking about uh, one of the lenses that, that came from your uh, emporium of lenses today. Uh, just briefly, um, because I was going to show everybody the thing in action, but I can't because of 
USB. USB is, is not my friend. I think I might have too many cameras going on, but I did a thing where I rigged up. This is clever. It wasn't my idea. It was Curly Toes came up with this because he's a computer guy. It's been frustrating to me to go over there to the other part of the studio to show you something and have to keep coming back over here to make sure you could hear me or to make sure the picture was on, that type of thing. So what I did was, had a brilliant idea, thanks to Curly Toes having the same brilliant idea, I just put a television over there and hooked it all in and got a little trackpad that works with my computer from over there. So now I can do this from over there. How's that? Pretty clever, eh? Except I've discovered there's a limit to how many, um, to how many things you can have connected at once. And I've got more than that limit, I think. Because I wanted to, to make sure that I had uh, my camera, I mean, on the, on the microscope. I had to have that because I was going to show you something. And then I had to be able to jump up there to that big screen so I could see what was going on. And then there had to be me, of course, and then there was the intro thing. And uh, yeah, I ran out of things I could use. So when, I, um, so when I set it up, I set up a linkage to the camera on my macro rail. The plan was I was actually going to have you watch through the camera while I did a setup and a shot. I thought that would be entertaining or um, instructional, something like that. But uh, this is what it looks like. And you thought I wasn't coming back, didn't you? You thought I'd permanently press that button. No, it's all hooked up right, it just doesn't work. I don't know how to, <laughs> I don't know how to do anything any different. So anyway, uh, we'll go over there anyway, I'm, because I want to show you what, what we have done. Yeah, can you see me and hear me? Because I just realized I don't have the chat when I'm over here, so I can't talk to you. But this is, this is what I set up, was this second part of the studio with the uh, with a screen that you can't see, but I can, so I know that I'm on. And uh, it's a, there's a microphone there that may or may not be working. So I'm gonna go back over there to check. But anyway, this is the 55 millimeter lens that I was going to show you how to, to use on a rig like this. Uh, but um, yeah, the, the thingamajig doesn't work. The uh, uh, H HDMI cable doesn't work, but everything else does. And this works. As soon as I get good at it, it'll be great. Let's go back over yonder. So what do you think? Was that, did, could you hear me? You can see and hear me over there. Great. Now I need to figure out how to get my, my messages over there too, so that I can read them and make the, the, that screen about 10 times bigger so I can see it. But anyway, that's good to know. By the time we meet next time, I am going to have it all working uh, once and for all so that we can do a, a proper demo because there's some stuff I want to show you, some high magnification stuff that I haven't even bothered trying to just describe because you need to see it uh, to, to learn it. So uh, I won't tell you what it is, but... Uh, and then there's a, a review, a big review, a big important review coming out that I want to do a lot of live stuff on. Um, I think you're gonna you're gonna like that too. That's that's gonna be that's gonna change things. Things haven't changed much in macro photography in the last five years, but this thing that's getting ready to happen is gonna change some things. Uh, so I'm super excited about it, and I wanted to have everything humming along by then and working. So uh, fingers crossed, we'll get it done. If anybody's an OBS ninja, um, maybe you can tell me why. My, my camera doesn't work when it's all hooked up properly. Yep, it's probably Gremlins. So I wanted to talk briefly about Pazoom. Oh, but I've got a, um, no, I've got a, uh, a question that I have to answer. Uh, that always is, that always comes first, questions. Uh, so uh, yeah, we'll pause for the question and I'll come back with a Pazoom. Um, where was I? Uh, Jay said hi, by the way. Ingolf's here from Germany. 
Ingolf, greetings, my friend. Glad you made it. And Jim is here, but I uh, should not tell him uh, that he's in Northport. Well, why not? Why, why don't you want me to know that? I thought you were just up the road, but you're all the way up in Tuscaloosa, in Northport. That's okay. That's very nice. Why would I not want to know that? And uh, a proud liberal's here from Chi Town, Chicago. Yep, and uh, Chris is here from uh, Austria, and uh, he caught quite a few beautiful, shiny green European rose chafers over the last few days. We had quite the invasion. If you like, I can send you some. I, I will never, ever decline such an offer. I would love to have a rose chafer because I don't think we have them here. We don't have uh, tiger beetles either. But uh, Rick was telling me, um, uh, Rick Littlefield uh, went out for a walk yesterday, uh, which I thought was not particularly interesting information until he told me that he went down to his river where he lives, he lives near a river. But uh, anyway, when he was down there, he said there, the place was infested, overrun with tiger beetles. He said he saw 30 of them, but he couldn't catch but three of them because they move faster than he does because of his knees, I think. Can you, can you picture that? Him with a net trying to catch tiger beetles that move at the speed of sound? I wish I could have been there. It would have been just a, a, a wonderful chuckle, but yeah. He, he, um, he was getting in touch to say, boy, those things are amazing to look at. And I said, oh, really? I didn't know that. I didn't know that is why I've been photographing them for a month nonstop. Um, but they are amazing. And I have got some pictures to show you. I don't think I'll, I'll be able to show them to you today. I don't think we'll have time. But some of the, these pictures of the tiger beetles are just, uh, they're just amazing. And um, it leads me back into what I was getting ready to talk about, which was Pazoom. There is a, a whole world of fascinating weirdness that happens at magnifications around 40 or 50, for one thing. And I've been experiencing a lot of that. But there are also crazy things that happen in our brains when we are viewing and uh, uh, perceiving stereo imagery. It's complicated but it's complicated in a kind of fascinating way that you don't need to know mathematics to understand. Um, and I had a lengthy conversation about this last night and uh, about some of the weirdness and how cool it is to, to, to know about it and some of, the, some of the tests that we can do to test whether or not we can actually see this stuff because some people can't see stereo. Um, they just their brains just aren't hooked up that way. So I'm I'm going to do that on Saturday at the Pazoom meeting. We're gonna uh, if if somebody like Rick hears about it, he might show up as well. I don't know, uh, but um, I, I I want to talk about some of the strangeness that that goes on, mainly in examining and looking at under the microscope or on our macro rigs, the some of the unusual surface characteristics of insects' bodies, uh, scales and uh, you know things like the, the um, lovely clown weevils that I uh, was showing you a couple of years ago. That type of thing that, that changes the, the way we perceive it differently at different magnifications. It appears to change form, change shape. And I was interested to find out why. And it turns out there's some real science behind it. And there's some crazy brain stuff behind it as well. So that's what one of the things we're going to talk about on Saturday. I'm also going to talk about your feedback about what you wanted um, uh, that this whole um, uh, Patreon thing to be like. Uh, and uh, certainly I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, possibly opening this, this weekend up. We try to do this once every six months or so just to invite anybody who wants to come if the, if the um, if the discussion is going to be particularly pertinent or interesting. But you know what? I can't because um, I'm going to be talking about the mystery lens, which I can only do to, to the, that group because I told them I would only do it with that group. Okay, plan B. We'll talk more about stereo. Remember, next month is the stereo competition. This month is the flower competition, and Angie's helping me do that. 
and uh, the pictures have started rolling in. And uh, I must say, they almost make me want to go out and photograph a flower. Almost. Not, not all the way, though. So, uh, yeah, you've got to turn in your flowers. If you don't turn in your flowers, you can't win. And uh, that way you're going to miss out on a lens because that's what you would win if you did, tur if, if you did turn a flower in and won. Do you want to see a lens I invented yesterday? It's a clip-on lens. It doesn't work. All I did was screw two macro lenses together and it just won't focus. It's a shame. I thought it would be an invention. But uh, no, it's just two cheap um, thrift shop macro lenses in one, like that. And it just kind of looks like you're looking through a Coke bottle. It's not very effective. So don't try it, it's a waste. What else was I going to tell you about? Um, yeah, we've got some uh, updates this weekend uh, also on the Pazoom thing, but that's it, enough about that. Um, Diffusion I talked about, if you didn't get your diffusion, then uh, let me know and, and I will do a second wave of mailings. But it is so traumatic for me to go to the post office um, that seeing as the lady now is convinced I sent my grandmother to Romania um, and that was mean, she gives me the evil eye when I go in there. So um, yeah, that, that's grandma's fault. <laughs> I went in to, to send something to grandma in Romania and they thought I was saying it was my grandma. So there you go. Um, anyhow, so uh, yeah, I'm just gonna do one, sh one shipment. Um, I've, got, I've got enough envelopes uh, for about another five before I have to go buy more. I, I've, I used 50 envelopes and $75 of stamps. That's a lot of stamps, but they're all gone. Um, uh, photographer 85 get some of these little bottles uh, uh, you can buy them in tiny sizes really very very tiny uh, uh, in fact I think I've got some yeah I've got I've got some that like that size put some ethanol in there and dunk a beetle in head down and they are they'll go forever I mean I've sent them to every corner of the earth like that Every now and again, if you put two in, they'll grapple with one another and pull pit parts off. So I generally, the thing is not to have enough alcohol in it. I mean, to put enough alcohol in it so it doesn't slosh around. It's got to be overflowing when you screw the cap on. And then they, they do just great, they float. I got this, uh, a bottle a bit bigger than this from, uh, from Canada that had been in the mail for, probably for a week and a half, um, I'm, I'm guessing. Um, and uh, that was what the one that Robbie sent me that had all of these insects in it, hundreds of them. There are, uh, there are only a few of them left that I haven't photographed. And uh, not one of them was broken, um, except pull, me pulling it out of the bottle because they were crammed in there. Uh, so yeah, it... Okay. I don't know what that was. I know that it wasn't that my signal had gone off because, um, yeah. It, no, don't send them to the address on my website. That's a fake address. Uh, it's actually just an old address that, yeah, it's a post office box. I wouldn't send them there. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll write it in chat. Because, should I do that? Is that a, a security thing? It probably is. I'll, I'll email it to you. I'll email it to you. Um, I see... Um, is isopropyl alcohol an acceptable substitute for the storage of insects? Yes, it is. It certainly is. I usually use 73%. Um, uh, it comes in 91% as well. Um, I th find the 91% dries things a little too aggressively, and it can, it can damage color. Uh, ethanol is my preferred liquid, um, and I use almost pure ethanol. Uh, but if you can't get it, or it's uh, too, too costly wherever you are, uh, go with the, the slightly more dilute isopropyl alcohol will be fine. Uh, I've used that for, for years and years and years. The 70% uh, mat is, uh, is better than the 90. The problem with the 90 is when you, when you take your bugs out of alcohol 
and put them in water because you want to do that. You want to wet them. You don't want to dry them from alcohol because they dry so fast that things start to move. Uh, extremities and, and um, uh, antennae and what have you. So I like to let the, the alcohol uh, equilibrate with a dish of cool water. Uh, usually about five minutes or so is enough, depending on the size of the bug and how long it's been in alcohol. And then let it dry uh, either in the air or use the technique I use for, for um, Hymenoptera, which is to use um, paper points. Now, I do more and more drying with paper points uh, because it, it gives me control over where, how the hairs dry. Do um, you want to see what I'm talking about? I'll show you. Let me, uh, let me grab an insect because I'll need an insect to, um, to be able to demonstrate this. That's my finger, not an insect. And I, uh, I hope you can hear me. I know you can't actually see me because I'm not uh, in the right place. Let me see. I wasn't prepared for this, so uh, I'll be winging it just a little bit. But I know I've got some insects handy here. So um, let me grab one. This is my this is my paper point drawing method. You know you know what it is reminiscent of. Uh, if any of you are neurosurgeons, you, you will do this in the operating room when you're mopping up blood. Um, we used to use things like big rags. Um, being a, a general surgeon and what have you in the, in the operating room, we, we, uh, we didn't stand for niceties like that. But the neurosurgeons would use tiny little points of paper uh, that would just soak up little tiny bits of, of fluid, like those that you can't see because I'm not focused properly. But that's, uh, yeah, that's what they use. So that's, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Let me see if I can maybe change the uh, illumination just a little bit. You know what? I'll give myself some depth of field. Oh, whoops. It's very sensitive, isn't it? There we go, now you can see them. Now let's find a, a, something to, to dry. How about a um, something big so you can actually see it? I think we may have dried this one once before. Oh no, let's do a tiger beetle, that's even better. So here's a tiger beetle in all of its boring, fresh out of alcohol color pattern. This is in ethanol right now. So it will dry from ethanol very, very quickly. Uh, in fact, oftentimes too quickly to, to uh, do much with the uh, paper points. Let me turn some more light on here. That's a bit better, I think. It's still not great though, is it? Yeah. That'll do. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I just take a couple of these paper points, drop them down there, and you can see it now. Yep, good. So the, the goal is to just lay this where you want the alcohol to soak up. And it will, it will draw massive amounts of liquid off a beetle. And all I'm doing is resting the paper point on a dry spot of the paper on a wet spot of the beetle. And I'll do that systematically around the whole thing. And as I've shown you before, there are two very key areas you want to get. Let's see if I can get it in focus. All right. The first is there's a gap. I don't know what it's called in insects. If humans had a gap like this, it would be called the nuchal gap. But I don't know what they call it in insects. It's right there between the thorax and the head. And then between the thorax and the abdomen is another one. And if you just stick the paper edge down in there, it will... This guy's falling off his pin. But if you stick it down in there edgewise like this, it will 
just soak up all the liquid in and around the head and it'll dry out the head area almost instantly. Then I do the same underneath the chin. Let me focus for you. This is hard with only three hands to do this. He's got pretty eyes, doesn't he? So um, yeah, you take the you take the point with the paper edge on, move the antenna out of the way, and then just stick this slice of paper down between the body segments, and it will just soak up all that fluid very very quickly. The most amazing thing about these things is the stuff on their back on their elytra. I'm gonna to try to show you this. I know I talked about this last week, but gosh, some things are just so incredibly interesting. You, you have to keep talking about them. You see that, that brown, mundane, kind of ordinary looking black, I mean, brown color? That is a, a mind-bogglingly complicated set of, of, of structures and colors uh, that just uh, defy uh, description, it really does. I, I'm gonna have to now show you a picture in case you weren't here last week and you, you don't know what I'm talking about. See the color coming back as it dries? That's a sure sign that you've got enough of the water off to photograph it. I'm gonna leave that on there for just a second while I uh, find you one of these pictures. It's, uh, I think it's worth it. Let me see. I was uh, I was looking for uh, snakes to um, I was looking for snakes to put in an article I'm writing and I've got a, my screens full of snakes right now. It's very disconcerting. So let me let me see if I can open open up this file without you seeing the name of it, which would give away a, a, an important state secret. Uh, I can't find it. Just bear with me. This will be worth it. These are all new, uh, new pictures. I uh, was telling uh, a friend last night that I have now uh, got 20,000 photographs I've taken to evaluate the lens that I'm going to be reviewing in mid-June. 20,000. 20,000, two zero, and then three more zeros. That is a crazy number of zeros to have on any number. But uh, a lot of them are looking at the, uh, uh, the, the surface of the elytra. Like, I could have prepared better for this, but I was in the throes of having an electrical meltdown. Yeah, here, here they are, I've got them. So I'm gonna share this screen hang on finally but I want to show you one that I didn't show you last week did I show you this one let me share this it's a bit gaudy looking to be honest so this is the um, this is the the stuff I've been photographing then uh, th th this is the same brown patch of stuff on the uh, on that beetle that we're looking at on the other uh, on the other screen. Is that just amazing? I mean, it's uh, it's really crazy how how bright that is, and uh, I've got much better pictures of it now. Uh, stuff that um, it's a little a little hard to believe is is something you'd just see in nature. But these are not um, stacked pictures, unfortunately, because I haven't had a chance. It just takes so long to get them all done. All right, so let's move on to, to the bag situation for now while I'm looking up these pictures. Uh, the, um, the, the thing that, hang on. Yeah, Here, here's one, uh, by the way. This is just a, a, a 50 times magnification. Uh, photograph of the surface of the elytra that we're just looking at, the brown area. This is, this is why it's brown. And uh, these haven't been processed, nothing's been done to them. And my signal just disappeared and came back again. Did we get a bit glitchy there, guys? 
I bet we did. I think that that was very possibly because I had too many, um, too many things streaming at the same time. Okay, well, we'll stop doing that. How about we just come back to normal and see if we can get that back up to speed. Let me answer some questions before we get on to the bags. Um, so, <clears throat> so um, Chris, you're checking out, or you have checked out, the Leowa 90mm uh, 2X. Uh, it's definitely better than any reversed in larger lens at all magnifications. Super sharp, even at f2.8, zero CAs. So I have high hopes for the lens at 3x. Okay, fantastic. Uh, I have been very impressed with Leowa lenses that I've used. Last year I test drove and uh, reviewed the wide angle macro lens, which was just so much fun. I used that to photograph another lens that I'm reviewing. Uh, it's such a good lens. It's a lovely manual lens. Um, so uh, I also have, have shot with the two and a half to five times uh, lens, which is a tremendous amount of fun out in the field. And um, yeah, they, they just make good products, um, generally speaking. I mean, I, I haven't used all their lenses yet, uh, but one day I probably will. And uh, if there are any of them that are, are bum, I'll let you know. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Johan Pruim. Greetings. You are new, sir, because I don't recognize your name unless that is a fake name. And I do know you. Uh, otherwise, welcome. Glad you're here and please come back. Um, yes, let me see. Boss 3333 from UAE Abu Dhabi. Welcome. Welcome. Um, I have a friend who lives in Abu Dhabi. I wonder if it's you. Well, we'd probably know that, wouldn't we? Yeah, so it's probably not, but there you go. I'm glad you're here. And Michael Wallace, uh, morning everybody from New Zealand. Uh, just got the new Godox flash unit, so I'm excited. I just have to find some interesting subjects. Yes, you do, that's kind of the whole, the whole deal. Finding things to photograph with macro at different magnifications is something that those of us who do it day in and day out take for granted. Well, well, let me speak for myself instead of everybody else. I take it for granted because I have a, a, a hundred lifetime supplies of things I could photograph with my macro lens alone, just the macro lens. So somebody suggested to me, why don't you write a series of, of little articles that just share ideas about what I would shoot at various magnifications. And you know, the more I thought about it, the more I liked the idea of, um, of what I would shoot at, at one to one, and at uh, two to one, and five to one, and 10 to one, and uh, all the way up to 20, 40, 50. I don't shoot at 100 because I, I just, uh, there, there isn't much I'm familiar with at that, uh, that's that little that I would make any difference for me to see it larger. The same is true for 50, though I've discovered some things at 50 that look just amazing. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna do those. I, I've already started actually, and uh, they'll, they'll be coming out uh, at some point in the near future, over on Macro Rails probably. Have you been to Macro Rails yet? Macro Rails is a pretty cool place, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's building and growing, and uh, soon it's gonna, it's gonna be a force, a major force to contend with. So go over and check it out before it gets too busy and, um, and, and see, what, uh, see what you uh, like over there. Uh, I'll be over there uh, quite a bit. And um, a lot of my stuff's over there. A lot of uh, uh, new material is over there that I've written. Uh, a lot of it in the form of reviews, actually. Um, probably worth checking out. If, you, if you're thinking about getting a particular piece of equipment, go read my review. They are not typical reviews because I kind of say my mind in them, which might not make me very popular with the people that are selling the stuff, but yeah, you should read the reviews. Uh, they're quite good. So where was I? Um, yes, the address, I, I was gonna put that in and then I decided I shouldn't put that in uh, because you can't do a private message on this, can you? Well, I can't stop and do messages now anyway. I'll email you. 
the address. That's what I decided to do anyway. We answered the questions about alcohol and um, let me see. Oh, I can't wait to see them. The Rose Chafers. I've seen pictures of them. Um, and uh, yeah, they. we have a beetle here called a dogbane beetle. It's very small. And again, it's very unassuming, a little round brown beetle. Until you get it under the lights and get a lens on it. And then it is every color of the rainbow um, shimmering. It's just glorious. Same with the uh, clown clown weevils. Do you have clown weevils in Europe? I've, ne I've never asked that. I don't think you do. I think they live only on one plant in swamps around here. Um, it's the Sestamibi something or other. No, Sestamibi is that radioactive isotope you scan thyroids with. Um, this is um, Sestambia. That's, it. That's what it is, Sestambia clown weevils. I bet you don't have them over there, but they're amazing. All right. Um, I'm glad you got the Mylar. Um, no problem with the, uh, the post office shipping stuff. It's all good. I'm glad to do it. Glad to help out whenever I can. Um, a wireless lapel mic would help so you can move freely in your studio. Yes, it would. However, wireless lapel mics do not work with Mac computers. You can't plug in the other end. There's nowhere to plug it in. If you plug it into the, the, the little hole on the side, nothing happens. It won't recognize it. I bought a special adapter. Would you like to see it? This was thanks to Curly Toes, who, who diagnosed the problem and said, yeah, you can't use those with Mac computers. You need to buy one of these. So I bought one. No, that's not it. Hang on. It looks like that, though. It was something like that. Yeah, that, that had a hole for a microphone in it and you plugged it in and it didn't work. Couldn't make it work. So yes, I've thought about that. Can't do it. Um, I'll try it again though when I'm doing the, the, the fix up thing over the weekend. Um, so bags, bags. Why did bags come up? Somebody asked me if I had a recommendation for a bag and it got me thinking about what bags would I recommend? Because I haven't bought a bag in five years and I probably won't buy one for another 10 years. Why? Because I have what I think are the two best bags you can, you can get. Uh, and that's a silly thing to say because I haven't tried the other ones. Whenever I go to a brick and mortar photography shop and we have two of them within an hour of my house, they're owned by the same company, but managed differently and they carry different lines of products not completely different but some different stuff and I always go and check out the bags and um, uh, they have a good selection they don't have some of the ones I looked at online mind you uh, and it got me thinking well what what would I, I do to objectively determine what the best bags were and uh, you kind of have to base it on your own personal experience. But I've learned a few things. If I'm going out for a walk with a camera uh, somewhere local on a day that it doesn't look threatening for rain or anything like that, there's no rain in the forecast, I don't take a bag. It just gets in the way. I take my, my camera on a strap with a lens. Rarely, rarely will I carry a second lens. And then I'll have a battery in one pocket and um, uh, uh, another card if I need one. That's it. Uh, it'll have the flash already on the camera, the diffuser on the flash. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll stay gone for four hours like that. Um, but I don't consider that a hike because I'm not going to stop and, and have lunch or, uh, you know, do landscape pictures or anything. If I'm going to be gone all day and, and hiking, with my macro gear. Then I fill my camera bag with uh, a, an extra lens, an extra camera body, uh, an extra flash, the, the tripod, all of that stuff. So I need a good bag for that. Now the bag I chose was the, the Tactical 450 uh, from um, Low Pro. It's a, um, it, it's a a bit of an overkill bag, but why I loved it was the outside of the bag is just covered with strapping, 
Um, and I was supposed to have the bag right here so I could show it to you, but it's back in the back because I forgot. Uh, but it's covered in webbing, uh, very heavy ballistic nylon webbing so that you can literally hang anything off the outside of the bag. And I do. I hang water bottles off it and a tripod and uh, all manner of things. So that if I'm out for 12 hours on a hike, uh, I've got everything I need, including a cell phone and emergency equipment and supplies and what have you. It holds everything. And even when it's got cameras in it, I can sit on it or I can lie on it to, to um, uh, stabilize you know, my camera when I'm shooting. So it, it's a very sturdy, very solid bag. It also screams expensive camera. Uh, so I try never to use that bag when I'm uh, in a city. I love to, to photograph cities. Um, in fact, it's one of my uh, real pleasures is to be in a, a big city that's new to me and just walk around the city with a camera and, and photograph buildings and people and anything, anything that, that uh, you know, strikes me as, as something that I'd like to have a picture of. Um, but I, I'm a bit nervous these days, to be honest. I'm, I'm a bit nervous taking a bag full of gear out around here. Uh, doing that in New Orleans or Atlanta or uh, uh, you know any of the other big cities around here, it would make me nervous because people are getting robbed of their stuff left, right and centre. So, of course, having the same gear around your neck isn't exactly hiding it either, but uh, there you go. Uh, so that's the bag I use, and it, it's almost like it, if I need less bag than that, I probably don't need a bag at all. Uh, but that's not strictly true, because there is another bag that I carry, and this is the bag I carry when I am insect collecting and taking photographs. And it is my second favorite bag, and I don't think I'll ever replace this. It's just this messenger bag from a, a group called Think Tank, and it's called the Retrospective. I don't think they make it anymore. It's, it's just um, it's just a bag. It doesn't have anything in it. It's padded, and it, it has little dividers that you can put in. But I don't bother with it. It's it's the perfect size for a big DSLR or even two cameras. Uh, it'll hold a big lens. It'll hold a, my camera with a 70 to 200 on it. And uh, uh, yeah, the the uh, tripod will strap to the outside. And if I'm, if I'm going for, I, I want a light uh, uh, package to carry with me so that I've got a hand free to do my, my netting and everything, then that's the bag that I'll take. Um, and it's lovely. But I saw bags that size that were selling for $3,500. I kid you not. Made by... Uh, uh, designer companies I, I, I don't even know I don't even know what um, what the name of the company was actually now as I think about it I think it was something like a perfume company Chanel yeah who would spend thirty five hundred dollars on a camera bag that didn't have a camera in it I would wonder anyhow I wrote this article it's over on macro rails and it's got lots and lots of art uh, pictures of different kinds of bags that I would consider like hard shell bags traveling that's that's different if I am traveling like I did to Boston um, then the ideal situation would be to take a large suitcase size padded bag but these days when you do that they take that from you and throw it under the plane not out the plane in the hold under the plane I can't do that. I would, I would have a complete nervous meltdown on the plane if I thought they were manhandling all my gear down there. So I have to pack it into smaller bags. And uh, the, the backpack that I have is just small enough to, to qualify. Uh, but the, yeah, a hard shell case is another option if you do a lot of traveling. But most of my traveling is in the car. So uh, when I'm doing that, it doesn't matter. I can just put it all in any bag and put it in the, in the trunk. But um, the, the, the trick is to, to figure out what is the least amount of bag, the least amount of weight 
that you can add so that you can stay comfortable all day long and yet not run out of equipment that you need. And uh, for some people, that's going to be a very small bag. If they're using, say they're micro four thirds and use a, a small camera like the, uh, the um, OMD. What I was looking at was um, a compact, uh, what was it? I can't remember the name, OMD uh, EM10. It's a very small exchangeable lens camera. But that and a um, the the, uh, the same um, a micro four thirds uh, Zuiko um, uh, lens, the sixty millimeter things, only about that long. The whole thing all together uh, would fit in a tiny bag. And if that's the only camera and thing you were taking, you just wouldn't need anything but a sling or a fanny pack to hold it. So um, yeah, th think about what you need. And I I would avoid any bag unless unless the bag was going to stay at home or stay wherever you store your, your stuff, I would avoid anything that comes in a, a big box uh, that has the, the foam that you cut out so that it, each individual piece has its place. That's what I do at home to keep all my stuff in good shape. But to do that in a camera bag that you're then gonna carry makes it unwieldy large and it wastes just tons of space. So I, it looks great and it looks great in the advertising to have you know a perfect place to put everything. But unless you, you're likely to forget what a lens looks like while you're outside, um, in which case you probably shouldn't be outside by yourself anyway, um, yeah, just, just put it in a regular bag and you can fit twice as much in. Um, it, it, cameras do get scratched up. They they do get a little bit of wear on them uh, because they're you're, you're using them actively. So you can expect that if you're spending a fair amount of time outside in the field, your cameras are going to get a bit dinged up. There's, there's no point babying them because if you do that, if you if you're so careful with your cameras that you're not paying attention to your surroundings, you're going to miss all the good shots. So you just have to accept the fact that things do get a bit bashed up and, and uh, carry a bag that's comfortable. It's more important to have extra water out there than it is to have an extra lens anyway, in my opinion. What other lenses, what other bags did I see? So I, the, the, the ones I talked about in the article was a little Adorama shoulder bag that was one of the first bags I bought. I loved it. It was perfect for a small camera. And um, let me see, there was, um, takes me a second to find my way around. I can't show you this because I don't think it's uh, published yet. Oh no, it is, but I can't show it to you because I don't don't worry about it. It's a problem with me. Let me see. This the, the second um, the second camera bag that I looked at was the, in the article was the one I have, the Low Pro. And it's called the um, BP450 AW. The AW is my initials. That's coincidence. It wasn't named after me. They didn't know I was going to buy it when they invented it, but it is nice to have that. Um, I also listed a couple of lower priced ballistic type bags that have lots of padding and everything. Uh, and, and they're all okay. They're all just, they're all just camera bags. As long as you're not spending, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars on it, it really doesn't matter. Tenba is a brand that I really like. I, if I ever need another one, I'll probably get a 10, but they make one in particular, it's called a Fulton, Fulton, um, and it's lovely looking bag. It's not gigantic, but it would be good for a day, day trip kind of thing. Let me pause for a second, see if there's any questions I need to be uh, answering. Uh, C. Sackens here from uh, Transylvania, which is in Romania, if you didn't know that. And um, let me see. Uh, Athens, Demetrius, welcome. And uh, Laura's here from Peoria, also in uh, Greece. And Susan's here from Huntsville, where she is late today. That's okay. I'll just keep talking. You'll catch up. Uh, no, you don't have clown weevils? Didn't think so, but boy, that I love weevils. They're, um, they're, yeah, they're, they're, they're the cutest little things. They look, they look uh, delightful, and they all have fun funky looking feet. Uh, which uh, photograph well. Uh, the retro bags are still available. Are they really? 
um, the um, the uh, think tank bags Susan must be talking about. Um, yeah, I mean the uh, the I didn't know Think Tank made a backpack as well. Oh, that's that's cool to know. Um, I I haven't I haven't looked at um, uh, at Think Tank in a in a while because I don't need I, because I don't need another one. But that would be good. I'll look them up. Um, let me see what do, what do you guys have as bags? What, what do you you're all you're all doing some field macro? What do you use? What do you carry with you? Uh, I'd be interested to hear. Uh, especially if it's something um, something I haven't thought of, there are some uh, uh, beautiful bags by um, PGY Tech. I think that's how you pronounce their name. They've got a, a lovely modern-looking thing that looks a lot like uh, the Peak Design backpack, which I think Peak Design they they shouldn't have done what they did with their pricing and that silly tripod because uh, yeah I, I I lost confidence in them I love their straps I've got two of their camera straps and I absolutely love them but I don't think I'd buy the backpack it's just too expensive uh, you know two hundred dollars for a backpack is is a fair amount you can get that tenber axis um, which is a big tenber bag uh, for less a lot less than that seems to be pretty good but um, anyway yeah what are, what are you using what's your um, what's your bag of choice and uh, and what are you using it for um, when I first started I would take my bag uh, out uh, my big bag everywhere I went so if I went to <laughs> if I went to take a couple of pictures out at the botanical gardens you'd think I was on a Himalayan trek I had so much gear and that's just, that's nuts. The third part of the article that I wrote was about the, the best camera bag in the world because there isn't one. It's the one that's best for you. But they list, this, this is where I list that one uh, from, uh, it was Louis Vuitton. What did I say it was? Chanel. $3,750 for a camera bag. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's a duffel bag. I'd show it to you, but it's on it's on that website. Go over, take a look if you like. The um, Oberworth makes it. It's a company that make expensive bags. They've got messenger bags the same size as mine. They've got one called the Richard II. They name it after a king and then charge you a thousand and eighty nine dollars for it. But it's beautiful. The one I really like is the Sackler um, Doctor's bag. Um, it's it's uh, also you can find these on online easily enough, but it's Sackler S A C H T L E R, and it's their doctor bag, and it looks like a big doctor bag. In fact, it looks like my doctor bag, uh, only it's made of nylon instead of leather, and uh, it's great. It's nice and deep, uh, and you know with handles on it. It's not a backpacky type thing. You wouldn't want to lug it around the woods, but I love that thing. It's not very expensive. Well, it is. It's ridiculously expensive, um, $261, but I might buy it for that. Um, I love the, uh, the, there's a company called Porter Brace. Does anybody have a Porter Brace bag? They are pro all the way. Love those bags. They're terribly expensive, though. They're padded. You can kick them around, and they, they do great. Um, Think Tank makes a suitcase, a wheelie suitcase that fits on an aeroplane. Not on in the whole aeroplane, it fits on the bit you're allowed to put your bag in. And uh, that's, a nice, that's a nice one, uh, but it's too expensive. $450 with no camera included. F-Stop, two of them. F-Stop, I don't think I looked at that one, or did I? No, I didn't. Low Pro's coming out with a new one called the Whistler, which looks really cool. It's a suitcasey type one, but it's an and a backpack. I normally recommend if you're buying a backpack, buy a backpack and put it on your back. If you're buying a wheelie thing, buy a wheelie thing and tow it around. Don't buy a backpack with wheels on it because you're carrying all that undercarriage and it's heavy. So yeah, just do one or the other. Though I might consider that low pro whistler because it looks really nice and it's also got my initials after it 
400 AW. Yeah, lovely, lovely bag. So let me see, what are you guys using? Low Pro, Arthur is using. Uh, for that price, they could throw in at least a camera. Yeah, you, uh, you're not kidding. For $3,750, it should have cameras, lenses, and somebody to clean them for you at that price. It's ridiculous. But you know, for some people, they, they've just got to have something that's more expensive than, than the other thing. Don't understand it, but yeah, for some people, they will buy that just because it's so expensive. Which means I should invent a bag that's real rubbish but is more expensive than that and then they'd want that. That's a business model right there. Okay, so what were we, uh, what were we talking about? You know, I was going to show you this lens today because I think it's one of the best macro lenses that's ever been made. It's the, the, the old 55mm uh, micro nickel. What a stunning lens that is. It is so sharp. I'll show you next time we get together, but um, it's, a, it's a breathtaking lens. Just mounting it on the camera in the normal position. It's a uh, one to two lens, but it is so sharp and it, it focuses very close. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll find a nice big insect or something to photograph next week and I'll, when I have everything working. But that lens is aberration free. It, the color's perfect and uh, it, it's just gorgeous. It's a joy to use. It's a manual lens, as most of the best ones seem to be. Uh, a lot of fun. Um, so uh, Chris has the Tamrac System 6. That's nice, that's nice. Uh, and you use it for specimen collecting too. Good, yeah, and that, that is good. It fits a, a foldable net, that's a, a, a good idea. My nets are all tennis rackets, so I strap them on the back of my bag. Um, I need to make a collapsible net so I can sneak it into places where I'm not supposed to have a net. I shouldn't have told you that, should I? You'll report me. Well, I, I won't do that, I won't do that. Um, have I tried a Billingham bag? It's similar to that think tank, but better. Oh no, I, I didn't know that. I've not, I've not heard of Billingham. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll do a quick search for that. Um, a quick search takes me a while because I can't type. Did you know that? Oh, that is nice. Yeah, I'll I'll, uh, I'll share this with you if you'd like. It's um, they're nice, nice looking camera bags, shoulder bags, and rucksacks. They're um, it's it's uh, it says, yeah, well nice. Oh my goodness, they're expensive though, aren't they? Two hundred and sixty-eight. Oh, nice, very nice, certainly. But um, whew, a bit steep on the uh, prices. Four hundred and fifty dollars for that. Wow. Nice though. I'll I'll have a good look at them um, late. I'll have a good look at them later on because I've not I've not heard of that company. Is that a, a British company? Don't know. Don't know. I better move that so I can see my comments. What time is it? Have we started to run low on time again? No, we're fine. We've got three minutes. What do we need to cover in the last three minutes? Questions. Um, so uh, Nils uh, has a Think Tank Retrospective 5 for macro and a Think Tank, tank Midship Backpack for birds and wildlife. Great, great selection. Those two, lovely. Um, let me see... A cheap low pro for quick mobile shots and a huge low pro vertex 300 for big shoots and a small low pro Nova for walking around. You, you cannot go wrong with that company low pro. That was not the case when they first, you know, you know, I think when they first came out, they weren't making camera bags. They were making things to put your CD collection in or something like that. They made other kinds of bags and then they started making little camera bags. But since they got serious about it, and I made that whole thing up, I mean, I don't really remember what the, the deal with them was, but since they started making good camera bags, <clears throat> I have 
my, all my long lenses, my, my um, 600 is in a, a low pro padded case. I just love them. They're, they're really, really good. And the, they're a, relatively affordable. Though the one I have, the 450 AW has doubled in price since I bought it. That's, a, well, it was a long time ago too. Let me see. Mm -mm -mm. The Mover 10 or 20, the smallest retrospective. We'll look again in a month. Okay. Good. I'll look at them too. Mm. Brew your coffee plus cook your bacon and eggs. Uh, is that... I, I, I missed that point entirely. Was that a um, non sequitur? I think it probably was. Ingolf, for carrying just the camera with a lens, a second battery and a second card, you like the peak... This is Ingolf saying he likes the peak design three litre sling bag. I looked at that and you use a normal 20 litre hiking backpack. That's, that's a good size. 20 litres, by the way, is about the sweet spot for, for me, for weight and size. But I love the idea of that Peak Design. Um, Peak Design also has a, a, a strap thing that really looks good that you can attach things to. Maybe I'll look at them again. Um, everybody seems to like Low Pro as well. Edmonton, Alberta, David F, welcome. And uh, that's okay, uh, you, can, you can watch the replay. Um, it's just me talking and showing, showing off something that didn't work. Um, a broken thing that, uh, yeah, it would, wouldn't be, you didn't miss anything, you didn't miss anything. Um, and Susan is reminding you to click the like button, which uh, I would appreciate you doing because, um, yeah, the algorithm appreciates that too. By the way, talking about algorithms, <coughs> Two weeks ago, I met with my friend Stuart Wood and we had a conversation in this room, kind of make-believe we were in the room. Yeah, but we had, a, we had a talk and we talked about a lot of interesting stuff. Where to get live jumping spiders, wherever you happen to be. In the UK, over here, he gave us information about that. We talked about YouTube and the problems with YouTube, the gig economy. Uh, we talked about the algorithm. We talked about the difference between seeing videos and watching videos. Uh, what else? Networking. We talked about uh, getting sponsorship. We talked about layover. We talked about killing insects and not killing insects to take pictures of them. And um, we got into the ethics of macro photography. And we even talked about photographing snowflakes. Not not snowflakes the derogatory term uh, that you might be tempted to use but snowflakes the little cold things that fall out the sky we talked about that and we talked about dom caramacha and uh, several other things it was a good conversation and i just finished rendering the video i didn't have time to put it on youtube but i i mean it's sitting there on my computer right now in front of me by the time this video goes up, that conversation will be up as well. It's called Spider-Man 2 uh, because the first one was called Spider-Man and I couldn't think of a better term to describe it. So that'll be out today in an hour, less than an hour. Let me see. That's it. Um, I, it was a great chat, Vivian. Good night. Thanks for joining us. And um, the only low pro bags that are a bit of rubbish are the uh, flip side Trek backpacks. Yeah, don't know them, don't know them. Anything that has compartments in it that, that aren't the right shape for a camera, I'm not interested in. So there you go. Uh, that was the, oh, that was the reference for the high bag of a camera bag. Sorry, yeah, 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 you're, you're right. Uh, it's, um, the high priced camera bags just don't make any sense to me. They really don't. There's so much cool stuff that we would like to buy for our macro Buying a bag like that just doesn't make a bit of sense. So, um, is it a C-mount lens? No, it is not. No, it is an F-mount lens. Um, it, it is a... Wait there. I'm going to go get it.
I'm coming back. I forgot it had so many wires <coughs> attached to it there that I had to rip them all out. There's the lens. So it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And it is the sharpest lens you would ever uh, hope to see for a macro lens. Absolutely gorgeous, manual everything. And um, it's lovely. I absolutely love this lens. Uh, and we will uh, we'll use it on the, the platform. Now, of course, most of the time, with a fairly big subject, you wouldn't be using this on a rail. Uh, this is something you would focus with the focus ring uh, to do your focus stacking. And we'll, we'll do that too. We'll do that too next week. I'll show you how, in fact, that's a good idea. W what we'll do is we'll, we'll take some pictures on the rail um, and we'll induce parallax and show you what that looks like. And then we'll take some pictures without the rail and uh, you'll see the difference. That'll be good. That'll be interesting, intelligent and fun. Uh, okay, that's it. We're going to call it because it's uh, that time. It's bedtime over there. And um, it's such a weird choice, right? What is you tried the 250, the 350, the 450. Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, you're talking about the bag that Chris didn't like, I think. Yeah. And, um, Walt is talking about buying a Godox X Pro. Yes, it does. It does. As Bud has said, in, <coughs> has said in the past, I discovered a problem though that uh, you know you can use those Godox X Pros across camera brands uh, unless you're trying to use any kind of uh, through the lens metering that's where you get messed up I have several X Pros and they're all different camera brands and I just use them interchangeably but I went on a shoot with the wrong one the other day and it wouldn't trigger my flash so <clears throat> It was embarrassing, but uh, that happens. Okay, we're going to call it quits. Um, Bud, um, glad to see you. Uh, uh, well, here I didn't. I didn't see you. Uh, I didn't see you come in. You were quiet. You came in the the back way, and you have a retro uh, think tank as well. Same as me. Good. Good taste. All right, that's it. Everybody, good night. Have a great week. Um, if you're a uh, if you're a, a Patreon. Fellow, come to uh, the Pazoom on Saturday. Stereo and um, other stuff. It'll be good. It'll be fun. And um, Chris, I will send the address right now. Walter, send me your address right now and I'll go looking for it. Okay, guys, have a great weekend and I'll talk to you again soon. And thanks, bud, for moderating. I appreciate it. What did you shoot, bud? <laughs> did you shoot your age again? All right. See you guys later.